Hello everyone. Welcome to the course of data communication and networks. In today's class, we are going to learn about network application architecture. Okay. So basically a network application architecture uh, will be of two types. One is with respect to client server architecture and second one is peer to peer architecture. Okay. So you can, in short, we can also call it as P2P architecture. So what is this particular client server architecture? And what is this peer-to-peer -peer architecture we are going to see now, okay? If you keenly observe the diagram over here, so a simple uh, graphical representations of a client-server diagram, okay? So all the clients, it can be a mobile phone, it can be a uh, desktop or it can be your laptop which is connected to an internet. So everything need to be connected using a server okay so sometimes based on the applications it will be having a single server and sometimes if at all the connectivity is huge there will be having a huge multiple servers as well okay so there will be an interaction between the clients and the server in order to exchange the data okay and coming to the peer-to-peer -peer or p2p architecture there is no interaction of these particular servers servers need not to be used everything will be directly connected from a single client to the another client okay so in this particular architecture we are considering clients as a peer okay so each client or a peer is directly con connected to the another client or a peer okay so let's see how they work and what are the characteristics of both client server as well as peer to peer Coming to the client server architecture, okay, an application program running on the local machine sends a request to another application program is known as a client, okay. So if you consider a client over here, with respect to this diagram, we are considering three clients. One is the desktop, one is this phone, and one is our laptop, okay. All these three uh, clients are trying to communicate with each other okay now a program that serves this particular request is known as a service so in order to have a good communication between all these three clients a server is helping okay in order to transfer the data between all these three clients okay so this particular block which is connected with the internet to, to all these particular clients okay is nothing but this particular block is called as server okay now whenever a particular client sends some uh, data or want to send some data okay it sends a request suppose this particular client one desktop pc want to send some data to this particular client two okay so what happens initially this server receives a request from the client one okay now it responds to the request of this particular client word and do the necessary action in order to send the information to the client too so what's happening here server acts as an intermediate uh, mechanism or intermediate uh, concept or uh, a device in order to communicate between any two clients okay What are the characteristics of client-server architecture means? In client-server architecture, clients do not directly communicate with each other. As I have already said, the clients or the devices will not communicate with each other directly. Okay, even though they are using an internet, okay, they have no accessibility to directly communicate with each other. So there will be a uh, fixed server. Okay. So in order to communicate with another clients with respect to one client, okay, so there will be having a fixed server using an internet. First, whatever the data you want to send, you need to send a request to the server first. So how we can send the request to the server means using an IP address. Each and every server will be having its own IP address, okay. So based on the IP address, we can send a request to the server 
from the clients okay once the server receives the request from a particular client it checks to which client that particular request need to be served okay again using the same ip address the second client receives that particular data okay so always in a client server mechanism or the concept server plays an important role in order to have a communication between the several clients okay so in order to communicate with the server we need and send us ip address or a common a uh, simple ip address now what is the disadvantage of client server architecture means so uh, at least a single server need to be uh, connected between the clients okay so in order to uh, establish a perfect communication it's a kind of uh, uh gmail or it's a kind of sending a mail suppose you are you, you want to send a mail to some other friend okay so in that between you are using a particular server which stores the data whatever you are sending so that particular server will be having an I, ip address and using an uh, application or a web uh, server called gmail or some mail kind of thing okay applications you are able to send that particular a message or the mail whichever you want to send okay <clears throat> once the gmail receives the uh, message whatever you want to send okay you need to type in gmail you will be typing the email id address right okay so to which particular client you want to send that particular client uh, received address need to be typed in the gmail and we are able to send so what's here happening we are taking a help of a server such that they will be storing our mails okay for a particular period of time okay not only mails okay it can be our uh, social networking uh, applications or something like that but what is the main disadvantage of using uh, client server means suppose taken uh, social networking app or a kind of uh, e-commerce website whenever the festivals are there okay there will be so many products which are available in discounts are kept in the e-commerce website right and that too whenever at the weekends or the night times or the evening times whenever there is a huge traffic with respect to the social networking apps okay sometimes what's happening uh, due to the uh, over uh, buying of the products or in the e-commerce website like flipkart and amazon what's happening like whenever there is a huge traffic that means whenever more clients are trying to browse the pro several products or more number of uh, people are trying to use the social networking apps at a time okay so this server gets down okay so gets down means they cannot give access to multiple or more uh, traffic or the more clients based on uh, based on their capability beyond their capability they can't give service right let us say service is designed for only 100 clients beyond in a particular festival season or uh, a particular uh, sales kind of uh, e-commerce sites what happens uh, from 100 clients it goes to some 1 lakh clients okay so what's happening in that particular time the server cannot handle that much huge traffic okay so at that particular point the server automatically goes down and suppose a best example is suppose the students are checking out their results okay so the university website servers mostly goes down so okay so the checking of the results will be a bit late with respect to this kind of uh, this thing so whenever the client want to access the internet and want to access any other uh, clients data or want to exchange the data okay server plays a major role okay so one thing is in order to install the servers the cost will be very very high and also sometimes whenever there is a huge traffic uh, the the server goes down automatically due to which the operation gets delayed okay and coming to the peer to peer ar architecture here in this uh, uh, architecture or the concept the server concept is not at all involved okay so it has no dedicated server in the data center so the peers uh, we can also call it as clients here technically we are calling it as peers so all the clients or the peers will be uh, are the computers which are owned by the service provider okay whoever the service internet service provider 
so it's providing okay all the peers or the clients will be interconnected with the help of this particular service provider this happens uh, mostly in a kind of uh, homes offices schools and universities okay using a single network all the systems will be connected uh, and uh, each if they can easily share the data okay uh, with without any uh, usage of servers and all those things they can directly access the data uh, whatever they want okay so the clients or the peers communicate with each other without passing any information to the dedicated server okay so this particular architecture can be considered as peer to peer architecture okay so mostly uh, the peer to peer architecture or the direct connectivity of the clients uh, is used for file sharing as well as uh, internet uh, connection sharing okay now what are the features of uh, p2p or p2p architecture means first one is self scalability okay so in a file sharing system okay so all the clients or the peers generates a workload by requesting the files so uh, each suppose there is a 1 terabyte of uh, data okay instead of giving a load to only a single system all the systems which are connected together can share the files uh, equally or evenly or unevenly depending on the capacity and they can distribute all the files throughout the peers or the clients so what's happening the work is getting distributed or the load is getting distributed okay without the interruption of any kind of server okay and the second one is cost effective <laughs> cost effective okay so cost effective means here we are avoiding the connection or usage of server right so server server itself is will be uh, costing you so much so as we are communicating directly to an uh, particular uh, direct connection there is an avoidance of server due to which the cost most of the cost can be reduced okay